Mr. Mujica is a Berkeley educated lawyer in the US and European Union with a Juris Doctor in International Law. Mr. Mujica is also an executive director at DGS, a data sciences, a system engineer, and an entrepreneur with master's degrees in data science and IP law. Currently, Mr. Mujica is the chairman and CEO of M. M3N, uh, which is a real estate investment firm in the United States. Alberto, welcome and thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you, Thais. Uh, thank you uh, for having me and uh, I'm glad we were able to join for this discussion about the electoral system in the US. What's the main difference between the electoral system in the US and most electoral systems around the globe? Well, uh, most electoral systems around the world, especially the ones that are uh, for, for, for modern democracies, uh, use a direct electoral system, meaning that every vote counts toward the candidate for which they're voting. Um, and uh, whoever gets the most number of votes wins. I understand that there's there's slight differences between the the law and so on, but but in general, it's a direct system, and that's how most modern democracies work. But in the U.S., it's different. Uh, the U.S. uses the Electoral College. The Electoral College is a body that elects a president. It's composed of 528 uh, electors which actually choose the U.S. president. Um, uh, sometimes their vote coincides with the pop popular vote and sometimes it doesn't. Um, and uh, the Electoral College you know, is defined uh, in Article 2 of the U.S. Constitution. Right. And how are the Electoral College votes allocated? The, uh, the Electoral College votes are allocated um, to each of the 50 states uh, and even the, the District of Columbia, uh, Washington, D.C., um, based on the number of representatives and senators that that state has. Uh, in order for, for a candidate to win, that candidate must get 270 of those 538 votes. But uh, in addition to that, uh, what the Constitution does is that it leaves it up to each state or the legislature of each state to decide how they want to distribute the votes for each for for each state. Um, so, for example, Florida has 29 electoral votes, and uh, Florida uses the winner-take-all scheme. So, um, and uh, while Nebraska has five votes because it has three representatives and two senators, Florida has 29 votes. 20, 27 uh, representatives and two senators. Okay, I see. But if electoral votes represents a part of the population, how there can be a disparity between votes of the electoral vote, electoral, sorry, electoral college and the popular vote? What, why some, sometimes it happens, this difference? Well, that that difference, like like it happened in it happened in two thousand with uh, well in in modern history it, it's happened twice uh, in two thousand with Al Gore versus Bush, and in twenty sixteen in the last election uh, with uh, Trump versus Hillary Clinton. This can happen because every every although every every uh, state uh, decides how to distribute its, its electoral uh, its electoral college votes. Uh, 48 out of the 50 have decided to um, to follow a winner takes all scheme. Uh, what that means is that although the winner may have won by one percent, let's say 51 percent of the votes, the winner takes all of the electoral college votes. Um, so, for example, uh, Florida. Uh, in 2006, uh, Hillary Clinton got 48% of the votes in Florida. And, uh, and Trump got 49% of the votes. So Trump won the state, but 
Trump got 100% of the electoral votes. He got 29 electoral votes. Uh, so in, in essence, 48% of the votes up from the popular vote really were not represented in the Electoral College. So that's how you can get that disparity between the popular vote and the Electoral College. Okay. And how do other states allocate their votes? Well, there, there are, like I mentioned, uh, 48 out of the 50 states uh, follow the winner takes all scheme. There are two, um, there are two states that follow a proportional scheme. Those are Maine and Nebraska. These two states distribute the votes uh, by assigning the winner of the state, whoever wins the popular vote in the state, gets the two Senate votes, right, from the Electoral College. And then every district, based on the district who wins in that district, that elector for that district is assigned to that candidate. So it's, it's although it doesn't have to line up with the popular vote, it does have a tendency to come closer to lining up with the popular vote, uh, the, the, with the proportional system. Okay, and how does this system affect the strategy that the candidates following during the election? And does it have any other effects? And another question, what does all of this system means for these elections, especially next Tuesday? Okay, uh, so three questions in one. I'll, uh, I'll, try, yeah. to, I'll try to be brief. Um, well, candidates, and what ends up happening with, with a system like this is that um, they, the, 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 the candidates focus on the swing states. The states, in other words, what, what, what's a swing, a swing state? A swing state is a state like Florida. Uh, and in fact, Florida is the, the perfect swing state uh, because it's got a lot of electoral college votes. In fact, it's only, um, only California and New York, uh, sorry, California and Texas have more. Uh, and we have as many as New York. So we're the third largest uh, uh, state for electoral college votes. Um, so we're the perfect swing state because we have a lot of electoral votes and, uh, and uh, the elections here are decided by a very thin margin. Um, which is different from, for example, California and Texas, uh, where the, the winner in both of those states, in California, it's always the, the, the Democratic president, and in Texas, it's always a, the, the, the Republican candidate. Um, but in Florida, it can go, for example, in, in um, it, it went twice for Obama. It also went twice for Bush. And, uh, and uh, in 2016, the last election, it went for Trump. So it's oh. a big state because Different. whoever wins Florida wins the election. And uh, oh. because of the large number of votes and because the, the, the election margin is very thin. Now, uh, what's what, one other effect uh, of, of this, Electoral college um, system is that very popular states like California and Texas are often ignored during the election. Uh, not entirely, but but they're often ignored, although they're very populous and large, uh, mainly because their their electoral votes are pretty much allocated already. Uh, everybody knows that the Democratic candidate will win California, and everybody knows that the Republican candidate will win Texas. So nobody really, uh, the candidates don't go and pander to Texans or Californians, but they spend all of their campaign money in Florida. It's more about the culture of the place, right? Yeah, and, and well, well, that's yeah. why they end up, you know, having uh, Cuban coffee here in Miami, and then they go to Tampa, and then they go to Orlando, and they, they spend a lot of time and a lot of money in ads and uh, and uh, and trips to to um, to uh, to Florida. 
Um, and, and, and the bottom line is when it comes to this election, Florida is very likely to be the deciding state uh, that will elect either Trump or, or Biden. Uh, so hopefully, you know, uh, uh, here in Florida, we're always, uh, we're, we're familiar with, uh, with uh, recounts and contested elections after the George, uh, the, the Gore versus Bush election in, in 2000. Um, hopefully the, the, the margin will be large enough that the, the election won't be contested. Uh, like it was, for example, during uh, the two elections uh, for Obama, and I and uh, hopefully they won't be contested. But odds are, Florida will decide the election uh, this year. Oh, that's very interesting. And you are in Florida, right? Yes, I am in, in Miami, Florida. So how how does it feel there? Well, it's there's there's uh, currently uh, every 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 time I turn on the radio, every time I turn on the TV, every time I browse the internet, it's a political ad. Every every time I drive to the supermarket, there's Trump and Biden signs everywhere. Uh, <laughs> oh, I mean, they're spending their money here, which is a good thing for Floridians. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, it's sometimes. Uh, it's it's annoying. <laughs> but, but yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean, the, like, I, I did mention before that this has happened twice. the 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 popular vote has not matched the uh, the electoral college votes twice in in recent history. Uh, once with Al Gore. And uh, and in 2016, uh, with Hillary Clinton, uh, where both of these candidates won the popular vote, but the Electoral College went the other way. Yeah. Alberto, thank you very much for clarifying this question today. And I'm looking forward to discuss more with you and to see you more here and in another place when all of this finishes. So I'm glad to have you here. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you so much, Saiz. Uh, I hope I, I clarified a little bit how the Electoral College works and I do look forward to uh, uh, this COVID-19 crisis being over and, uh, and to this election being over. So <laughs> thank you and have a good one.